Uh, we heard the impact. We weren't sure what it was. Uh, we thought it was thunder. So uh, I went out, I asked a couple of guys if they heard it, and they said they heard it, but they didn't know what it was either. So I looked outside the building, and uh, I walked around, and that's when I saw the train sitting sideways on the tracks. And then I walked a little further, and I could see the part of the train that came through the fence and that it was on fire. And uh, first thing I did was just run back as fast as I could to the door. And I told Karen, call 911. And I told these guys, get fire extinguishers and meet me outside. So we all went, uh, went, went running over there. And there was a couple more with us that aren't here now. But uh, we all got together and tried to put the fire out. And diesel fuel was pouring out of the, out of the wreck and getting all over our shoes. And we were kind of scared at that point. But uh, we could hear people you know, uh, needing help. They were crying out. So uh, we helped a few of them, uh, like two or three of them out, and did what we could. And uh, unfortunately, I think one of the people that we pulled out didn't make it. He, he was very badly injured. And uh, we just did what we could till the fire department got there. On January 26, 2005, at 6.03 a.m., southbound Metrolink commuter train number 100, which carries between 200 and 500 people, collided headfirst with a sports utility vehicle that was abandoned on the train tracks immediately south of Chevy Chase Drive grade crossing near a Costco store in the north of downtown Los Angeles. The train crashed into the trains on both sides of the tracks. One was a stationary Union Pacific freight train, which was parked on an auxiliary track known as the Slide, and the other was a northbound Metro number 901 train, which was carrying between 30 and 50 passengers, traveling in opposite directions. The collision was a chain reaction, which resulted in the deaths of 100 people, and at least 200 people were injured. The Costco employees heard the impact, went outside, and called 911 after witnessing what happened. Why was the utility car there? And who put it there? A man by the name of Juan Manuel Alvarez, who was born on February 26, 1979, was a laborer from Compton, California, and he was feeling suicidal on the morning of January 26. He decided to take his Jeep Cherokee sports car and drove it on the train tracks in order for his car to be hit with him inside. He further doused the entire car with gasoline, possibly for the car to explode and for him to die instantly. He sat inside the car, patiently waiting for a train to collide with his Jeep. He slit his wrists and stabbed himself repeatedly in the chest before going to finish his initial plan. However, right before the train collided, he decided he did not want to die that day and immediately jumped out of the car and ran. The train could not stop in time and ended up hitting the sports car. Alvarez ran to a safe distance and simply watched as the train derailed. The National Transportation Safety Board team investigated the crash alongside the Brotherhood Locomotive Engineers and the Trains Men Safety Task Force. The Glendale Police Department and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department investigated the criminal case as 11 lives were lost at the hand of Juan Alvarez. Those who were killed in the crash were men well, Alcala, 51, Julia Bennett, 44, Alfonso Caballero, 62, Elizabeth Hill, also 62, Henry Kalinske, 39, Scott McOne, 42, Thomas Ormiston, 58, William Parent, 53, Leonard Romero, also 53, Deputy James Tutino, 47, who was also a part of the LA County Sheriff's Department, and Don Wiley, who was 58. Alvarez was arrested swiftly the same day of the collision. It was said he was suicidal for a long time before the incident occurred. He had attempted suicide in the past, according to reports. He was a well-known methamphetamine addict and was prone to have delusional and psychotic behavior. At the time of the collision, Juan and his wife were dealing with extreme marital issues and it was said that they were at the verge of divorce. Police thought Alvarez indeed changed his mind about his death at the time, and that's why he abandoned the car. However, they promptly charged Juan with 11 counts of murder and later charged him with murder with intent to kill. Police have released the 911 tape from the deadly California train wreck yesterday. 11 people died in that crash. 
The man accused of causing it all has been charged with multiple counts of murder. Manuel Gallegas is at the crash site in Glendale and has more. A delayed court appearance for the man investigators say caused the deaths of 11 train passengers. Juan Manuel Alvarez will now be arraigned on Friday. Authorities are charging him with multiple yeah, yeah. counts of murder and could okay. seek the death penalty. The mere fact you create a train wreck and people die can support murder charges under California law. Late Thursday, heavy equipment was brought in to help with the cleanup. Authorities also released the 911 tapes when the trains collided. Okay, what's the address of the emergency? 2901 Mosquitoes Boulevard. Okay. That's the train tracks on the side. We need a lot. Ma'am, how many people are hurt there? Hundreds. More than 200 passengers were injured here, many of them critically, and survival was really a matter of chance. Henry Kalinske of Orange County never made it. I called him on the cell phone and he didn't answer. I called him at work and he didn't answer. The southbound train that struck the SUV was actually being pushed by a locomotive, so it was the passenger car in front that took the brunt of the impact. Employees from the Costco next door could hear people crying and tried to save the wounded passengers. We help people sit inside carts on the inside part and we reeled them out to our loading dock area. Alvarez's wife had a restraining order against him and court documents stated that he was dangerous and on drugs. Investigators say he had tried to kill himself before the train wreck and now that desperate act has brought misery to an entire community. The police went from believing this was a suicide to it being deliberate murder. During his trial, the prosecution sought out the death penalty due to a seldom used law making train wrecking and causing a person's death as a capital punishment. That law was passed in 1873, created to prosecute Old West train robbers who were known to blow up the tracks and rob trains. Unfortunately, this did not stick and Juan was acquitted of the train wrecking charge. Also during his trial, it was said that Juan slit his wrists and stabbed himself before the crash, based on eyewitness reports. It was also said he did this as an act of terrorism, but that was dismissed as there were no evidence of him being in a terrorist organization. On June 26, 2008, Alvarez was found guilty of all 11 counts of first-degree murder with special circumstances and one count of arson related to the incident, possibly because he slabbed gasoline all over his vehicle. On July 15, 2008, the jury made a recommendation of life without parole and one month later he was sentenced to 11 consecutive life sentences. The entire trial Juan sat silent, gasping and audible sighs, especially at his sentencing. He was heavily criticized as he showed absolutely no remorse for any of the crash victims or their families. His defense attorneys argued that Juan never meant to kill anyone but himself that day, described his act as an aborted suicide attempt. Judge William Pounders was not convinced that Juan intended to die. He stated, I don't believe for a minute you intended to kill yourself or harm yourself in any way. I think you were setting up a scenario so you could go back to your family. Half a dozen family members of all victims came and addressed Juan. Sister of crash victim William Parent, Elaine Parent Sieber, looked at Juan and requested for him to look back at her. She addressed him with eyes locked, stating, Thank you for looking at me because I want you to know the pain you have caused me. You did a very bad and stupid thing. If you had tried to cause pain and anguish, you have definitely succeeded. She also asked if he wanted to die. Why didn't he lie on the tracks? She also stated it was because of Juan's selfishness. Their terrible nightmare will never end. Henry Romero, the nephew of victim Leonardo Romero, stated, I wish you the most miserable life possible. Todd McNoan was also Scott's brother, told a story of his niece sobbing, not being able to have another chance to dance with her father. Alvarez later apologized to all the victims' families, but made no public statements during the trial. Don Wiley's wife, Leon, forgave Alvarez but was devastated by Don's death. She told the court that she humbly believed that Juan was not trying to harm anyone but himself and she placed the blame on the severity of the crash and the Metrolink company using the controversial method, a push and pull system to operate the trains. 
A push and pull system is a configuration for locomotive hold trains and allows them to be driven from either end whether they have a locomotive in front or not. The locomotive is connected to one end of a train such as a multiple unit train control to a vehicle equipped with a control cab on the other end of the train. The second vehicle may be another locomotive or a controlled car that is unpowered. Trains are very heavy vehicles that need ample time to stop, especially if it's carrying passengers or cargo. There's no known reason why there's a controversy about the system besides this train crash. I haven't found specific information to support Leon's claims of the system being the problem. I believe Juan placing his car on the tracks was the root cause to the accident, not that the train could not stop in time. Multiple of the victim's family members did not agree with Lynn and decided that Juan Alvarez could not be forgiven. In memorance of the crash, all Metrolink train engineers were asked to sound their train horns at 12.01 a.m. on February 2, 2005, and the Control Point Metro was renamed to the Control Point Ormiston in memory of Thomas Ormiston, who was the conductor that was killed instantly in the accident. Juan had numerous choices to make that day. If he was going to end himself, why do it in a way with other people's lives are at risk? Why place your own car in front of tracks that passenger trains are always commuting? Why didn't Juan talk to his wife about what he was going through? And why did he never seek help for his mental health? It seems he had mental illness mixing it with methamphetamines, which causes the brain not to process properly. Had Juan taken his mental health seriously, this incident would have never happened. I believe Juan murdered 11 people. He never thought about anyone at the time of the crash and stood and watched from a safe distance while killing others. These victims did not deserve to die at all, and their families do not deserve to emotionally suffer over one's other sadness. I wish Juan would have sought help for his issues instead of causing the deaths of 11 people without trying to get help for them. Remember, Costco employees called for help, not Juan. May all of the victims of the January 2005 Glendale Metrolink train crash continue to rest in peace and justice has been served as Alvarez will spend the rest of his life in prison and has no chance of ever being released. Rest in peace to all the victims.